Awesome. Thanks, Steve. So not a lot of time this morning, but I figured a lot of us spend a lot of time in Chrome or in our dev tools, whichever you prefer. So a few tips that I've discovered myself recently, even though I spend most of my time in them. So first is I'm sure all of you guys have looked at the network timeline or the waterfall graph in your dev tools. One thing I discovered recently myself is that you can actually right click in there and copy the entire waterfall as a JSON file. And that's the HTTP archive format, which is actually really, really handy because I've certainly taken screenshots before, annotated them, and sent them to somebody else. Terrible way to do it. With this, you can actually export the entire, all of the metadata, send it to somebody else, and then you can use other tools to actually make use of that data. So for example, uh, if you have Ruby installed, you can install this little binary called gem install har, and you can just pass it the har file, and it'll open up the timeline view. Uh, it'll use a different uh, visualization, but you have the full fidelity uh, of the entire uh, metadata of all the requests. So that's a very, very uh, handy trick. And then uh, beyond that, you, you can also use tools like PhantomJS or other headless browsers to capture this data for you, so you can automate it as well. So um, we recently actually just recorded an entire episode on this, just like 40 minutes of all the possible things they can do with a HAR file. So I encourage you guys to look for it, just search for the HAR show. But one of my favorites that I actually found after we did this show is this Jenkins integration, which is totally awesome. Um, what it does is it actually uses Phantom, right? You just pass it a script, it, you give it a website, and it captures the entire waterfall, and then it, it creates, uh, it actually posts it to Jenkins. So on every commit, you can have this automated, right? As you push code, you can actually run, for example, YSLO and get a report. So you can, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but at the bottom here it says, uh, you forgot an expires header in this build. So maybe you changed your configuration, or maybe your designers added uh, more external resources and now you're failing your uh, DNS, uh, number of DNS lookups, right? So you've, you've crossed some threshold. So very, very uh, handy tool. Now, a lot of those tools, or the network waterfall is very good for optimizing kind of your startup experience of the page. It turns out that we actually need to care about the experience on the page once it loads as well. So 60 FPS is not just for games. And in Chrome, we actually have this new tool, which I think is totally awesome, uh, in timeline called the frames view, where you can zoom in, and as you interact on the page, we will actually show you how long each frame takes to render. So for example, in the middle here, uh, you can see that this frame took 46 milliseconds. And you can drill in and expand it and see what actually happened that triggered this. In this example, uh, this, when I captured this site, it was actually firing an on-scroll event twice, and each one took about 20 milliseconds. So clearly, you know, you're way over your 16 millisecond budget here, because one frame took 40 milliseconds. And the reason why you should care about this is when you scroll down the page, for example, you're going to get that really janky experience of, you know, it goes fast, then it goes slow, and then it goes fast. And it feels like your computer's getting bogged down. But that's what's probably what's happening. You have JavaScript executing on your page. Then you can actually drill even deeper. So Timeline gives you a lot of very useful information. But you can actually go into Chrome Tracing, which is the tool that we use on the Chrome team to actually figure out what Chrome is doing. And uh, in this screenshot, I have uh, kind of these three spikes, and these correspond to the frames being rendered at certain points in time. You can zoom in, and you can actually figure out what are all the threads within, for example, Chrome are doing. So what's the GPU thread doing? What's the CPU uh, uh, thread doing, and all the rest. But another tip that I recently discovered, I didn't realize this, was that you can actually annotate it with your own events, which becomes really powerful, because then you can see what is Chrome doing, but then what is, what is your code doing as well? And to do that, you just add some console time uh, lock statements into your code, and you will see these blocks appear uh, within Chrome Tracing, which is uh, really, really handy. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have uh, tried uh, remote debugging. Um, I think Opera, Firefox, Chrome uh, certainly has it. And it's, it's a very, very powerful tool, especially when you're talking about mobile. Now, a few uh, tricks that I've learned recently. So I should say, you can use this to debug a mobile phone or just a remote uh, Chrome instance. So you can start Chrome on a, a, with a specific port, and then you can do some interesting things. So first of all, of course, you can open it in another Chrome browser. So DevTools itself is just an HTML app, which is really cool. And the way it gets its data is through WebSockets. So you don't have to use Chrome. You, you can use another browser. But you can also just script it yourself, so you can connect to it uh, via whatever WebSocket client that you have, 
and actually drive Chrome, so give it commands. So for example, here I'm saying, hey, enable network logging, so network enable, and please navigate yourself to this uh, Twitter search stream and search for DevTools, and it will stream me all of the network data. And the network data is incredibly rich. So for example, here I'm stripping 99% of the data. This is just one event that says, that Chrome sends me saying, hey, I'm opening an X XHR to this uh, URL, and by the way, I'm going to bypass the cache because, you know, for whatever reason. So you have all of this metadata plus all the timing data. So think of the things you can do with this. Um, I think it's really powerful. But then you can also apply this the other way around, which is to say, uh, you can actually feed it other data. Chrome is not the only thing that can generate this feed. Um, so uh, guys at Square have this new tool called uh, Pony Debugger, uh, which is awesome. And what it does is they actually have native apps, iOS apps, that are generating this feed. And they're connecting to that uh, using their browser. And uh, they can see the full network waterfall of all the requests that are happening in their native app. And in here, they're actually uh, grabbing the core data and visualizing it in DevTools as well. So it goes both ways. You can generate data for DevTools, or you can drive Chrome through this protocol, which is really nice. And then uh, last one that I have here is benchmarking. Benchmarking is actually incredibly hard. There's so many different caches. There's your operating system. There is uh, Chrome itself, or any browser will have many different caches. You need to care about how you go about clearing all those things, because otherwise you're not, you're not going to get good results. So, the reason I'm showing you this is there's actually a really handy extension that uh, ships uh, or we have for Chrome called, uh, well, Chrome Benchmarking. And to have it installed or to install it, uh, just install this extension and then you need to start Chrome with a special flag called Enable Benchmarking. And you'll get a nice little icon in your toolbar which you can click and then you can pass it any number of URLs and uh, you just hit play and it will run the test. It will make sure that all of the caches are flushed, all of the sockets are closed, everything is done. And once it's done, it'll actually give you a lot of metrics for things like what's the mean time, what's the standard deviation, what's the number of DOM elements, uh, and so forth. So really, uh, really handy stuff. And that's all that I have for you this morning. But as Steve mentioned, I do have a talk with 33 minutes more of this uh, later in the day, um, right after lunch. So it'll be in, uh, at 1.15 in uh, Buckingham Room. Thank you.